So let's start the topic for today. We are expecting a lot many to dial in, but in the interest of time, let's uh, start the session. Um, so the topic for today, it's a CAPM related topic. So CAPM certification, certified associate in project management. So the CAPM certification, is it for you? How you can benefit from it? So it's primarily focused upon, should you go for CAPM certification or not? That's the uh, question that we will try to answer in this uh, session. Uh, so it's a one hour webinar. Okay, so uh, Indian time from 8 a.m. Uh, 8 p.m. right now till 9 p.m. Okay, so for one hour. And uh, I'll try to complete the uh, session in around 40, 45 minutes, and then we can have a dedicated Q&A. Okay, so uh, if you have anything, any question which is not relevant with the topic, something out of the context, uh, you can keep it, park it till the end. Okay, so we'll have a dedicated Q&A at the end. Around, we will stretch if required beyond nine, if possible. Okay, um, but uh, while covering the topic, if you feel you have some query, please uh, request me. You can put the query in the chat box, or you can uh, unmute yourself. If you cannot, ask me to unmute you, and then you can ask the question as well. But uh, if it's in the context, please do that. Else, wait till the end, please. Okay, so that's how we will do it. Uh, so let's start with the topic now. Uh, before we get into the topic, just a little bit about myself and the organization so that you know whom you are getting the information from. Uh, so my name is Arvind Nahata. I've been working with ProThought Solutions as a uh, partner director, and I'm one of the co-founders of ProThoughts as well, back when it was founded back in 2015, right? So, um, and then uh, I'm PM, I do conduct, uh, I'm myself a project management uh, certified trainer. So authorized by PMI to conduct these certification courses for CAPM, PMP, and many others, disciplined agile and all. Uh, okay, so uh, you can see my qualifications. In short, uh, I did my engineering, did my post-graduation from Virginia Tech, US, worked in US for around 10 years, uh, almost a decade, then shifted back to India in 2011 when I joined uh, Accenture full-time, worked with Accenture for around five years, four and a half, five years, uh, and then uh, got into ProThoughts since 2015 till date. I've been working full time with ProThoughts. Okay, uh, I, I'm myself a, a certified trainer, PMP certified, CA, um, and uh, I've conducted around 5,000 uh, hours of training in project management, mentored a uh, couple of thousand professionals across the globe and a uh, lot of workshops and sessions that, that are conducted which are individuals which are corporate driven okay so um, and overall about 20 years of experience that i have so that's about myself in short okay and about the organization pro thoughts so pro thought is one of the registered education providers we call it as ret uh, or our rep id number is 4032 and we are also the premier PMI ATPs authorized training partners with PMI. So we are also the distributors of RMC publication, Rita Mulki Corporation in India. And uh, we operate out of two offices, one in Pune, India, other is in Mumbai, India. So uh, I, I sit in Pune office of uh, ProThoughts. And then uh, pre-COVID, we were class conducting classroom trainings in six different cities in India. You can see the names and in several locations in Middle East and Southeast Asia. We have just started the classroom trainings in the last one, two months again. It's not all in six cities yet, but it's gradually going up. Okay. So unless we see, uh, I hope Omicron settles down fast and we can uh, expand the classroom trainings again back to normal like before. So that's there. And then uh, 5,000 professionals we have trained, 10,000 hours of training we have done across 300 batches. You can see the certifying certification courses that we do offer. Okay, certification courses, non certification courses, a lot of things in project management. We are associated with 50 plus corporate clients. Okay, if you are big names, we are uh, medium ones. And then we are also associated with several B schools. All the faculty trainers in ProThoughts, including myself, we are all visiting faculty in some or the other B schools. And uh, since 2015 till date, we have got quite a few recognitions. You can see the names below. Right, CIO Review Magazine Times Group, that's the first one we got back in 2015 when we were considered among the top 100 startups. That was the trigger point for us to leave our jobs and take this initiative full time. And then Your Story published our story in 2019 and there are a few others as well. 
okay, before and after that. Now, what we do, so we do a lot of things in project management beyond trainings. If you see on the right top corner, classroom trainings, which we are hoping will start full-fledgedly back after COVID. We've started it just now in six cities and a few other locations. Online trainings, right, like right now what's happening, the live online sessions, then e-learning or self-paced learning programs. Okay, so recorded videos will be available. You can go through it at your own pace. So that's the e-learning. And then the corporate training. So these are the four uh, training part. And then beyond trainings, we also implement several project management softwares. MS Project, Project Insight, Primavera, Jira. So there are a lot of project management softwares. So training and implementation on those. Then advisory and consulting in several, several corporates. And we also are coming up with an e-commerce platform, bookstore. Okay, so one stop solution for all the products and services in one place. It's like a mini Amazon. So that's going to launch early next year. So that's the um, that's all we do. And we are developing several other initiatives as well. Okay. So uh, that was all about uh, the organization. Now let's talk about the topic for today. Okay. So the topic for today is CAPM certified associate in project management, right? Should you go for it or not? But before that, my first question to you will be, think about it. What is a project? Anyone? Any examples of a project? Probably examples, you can give a lot of them, right? Big ones, small ones. Can you think of any projects? Corporate projects, public projects, government projects. Probably a lot of them you can think of, right? So let me just talk about a few of the things about this. So what is a project? How do you define it? Yeah. Aadhaar's implementation is one of the pretty big projects from the government, right? So any of the initiatives that you take is a project. So let me define how, what is a project? How do you define a project? And then I'll give you some examples from different sectors as well. Okay. So uh, first of all, what is a project? So when you say project, these are the characteristics of a project. So for a project, there is something which is new initiative that you are taking, right? There has to be a new initiative, something new. And that's why the output that is coming out may be tangible, maybe intangible. Something has to come out, something which you can touch and feel or something that you can just uh, feel, you cannot touch, right? So, but output eventually has to be unique, okay? And then when you start a project, there has to be an objective in mind, right? That you want to achieve within a given budget, within certain given constraints, what you need to deliver, a lot of things in your mind, right? So there has to be set an objective that you want to achieve. Every project has to have a start and an end date. Whenever you start a project, there is a lot of uncertainty in the beginning. As you develop the project, things become more and more clear. That's when you revise the plan multiple times. That's called iterative approach to a project. You keep on revising the plan, right? multiple times and that's only because of the uncertainty at the big in the beginning right and eventually what project does is it creates value okay so setting up a factory if you're setting up a factory the factory is a unique output and there is a value associated with it right the worth of the company goes up as soon as a new factory gets set up you had five factories in your organization a sixth factory was set up so the worth of the company went up because there was a value that got created out of that project, right? So value creation. And then the next thing is projects are everywhere. It's not specific to any industry or domain or geography. So you will find projects all over. So let me give you some examples of certain projects, which you can find out. Then you will understand the last point. Okay. So when we talk about projects, examples, these are few names and here are a few pictures of those. So if you talk about projects, you will find projects in IT, projects in manufacturing, banking, pharma, construction. There are several public sector projects, defense projects, business entrepreneurship related projects, right? So projects are almost everywhere. 
So if, wherever there is a project, you need to manage it. That's where project management comes into the picture, right? If you go into a senior role, senior higher knowledge, but if you, are, you start working in a project, still you need to understand what are the things you need to know about a project, what are the aspects of the project. Still, there are a lot of things that are even a fresher out of the college. Somebody with one year, two years of experience also needs to know about the project. That's where CAPM becomes handy. Right? The examples you can just read out in each of the sectors. I can just wait for like maybe 30 seconds. So for each of these, you need a lot of planning, implementation, pre-initiation, pre-planning, a lot of those things you need to do before you actually say that this project is done successfully. So I'll wait for 30 seconds, just go through the examples in each of the areas. Okay. So these are just few examples of the project and we just saw what a project looks like, right? Here, the, these are the characteristics of a project. These define whether something is a project or not, right? Okay. Next thing we will talk about is project management. Now that you understand a little bit about what a project is all about, now how to manage a project, okay? So managing a project is something which is both art and science, okay? And then a lot of things that you need to know. When you say art and science, it's less of a science and more of an art, okay? So what we can teach you most of the time in any of the certifications in, of, about project management is the science part in detail, and a little bit about art on how to maximize the effectiveness of art. Okay. So not every project management is project manager is successful. Like two of you both attend the CAPM certification. Say you attend my course. So, so listen to the same lectures, right? Listen to the same lectures, understand the concept effectively. Both of you have gone through the same training. Still one might be successful. One may not be successful, right? Why? because one was able to implement that knowledge effectively. And that is what is art. Art is all about implementing effectively, right? Two painters coming out from the same painting school. One becomes a renowned painter, globally renowned painter. And the other one is still struggling, even though they both have learned the same thing. Why? Because how to use that knowledge effectively and to create value. That is what is the art, right? So in art, we can just train you on how to develop, how to enhance, but eventually you have to implement it. You have to develop that, implement it and make it work for you. Then only you will be successful, right? So project management is also art and science both. So what we normally teach you is 20% science and maybe a little bit of art, maybe 20, 30% of art. The other 50% is really dependent on the individual. That's the success. So tomorrow, if you come back to, uh, if you come back saying I'm CAPM certified and I'm looking for a, a job in a project, I'm looking for an associate manager's role, something like that. So I know you have knowledge because without knowledge, CAPM, you cannot crack. So knowledge wise, probably my focus to test you will be less. I'll not test you on the knowledge if you're CAPM certified, because that's a proven thing, right? So what I will be testing you is the application of that knowledge your analytical skills, your patience. So a lot of these type of things, which still needs to be tested. So that makes you successful. Otherwise, every CAPM certified will be a candidate will be such should be successful, right? But not all are successful. But this is the first stepping stone to be successful. That's the whole point. Without this, it's tough to become successful. It helps achieve what you want to achieve. But eventually, you still have to put in effort. It will open the door for you. But you still have to walk out of the door or walking up from the door, right? Walking from one side of the door on the other side that you still have to do. So CAPM is just opening the door for you. Walking from one side to the other is the art that you need to excel, master, learn, excel and master. And we'll talk about a little bit on that as well. Okay. So technical knowledge about project management, all that you learn is science and the behavioral or 
uh, uh, what I should say, uh, behavioral or uh, interpersonal skills. That type of things that you need to learn is art. Okay. So that's project management. Moving on to the next slide, uh, moving on to the next topic, there is a concept called, which you can see at the bottom, Suhari. Okay. So with a CAPM, so Suhari, anybody aware what that is? That's my favorite topic, which I normally try to put in, in any of the webinars, which I do. Anybody who's aware what Suhari is? It's coming out from martial arts. So it's the three phases, Su, then Ha, then Ri. So Su is the learning phase, right? Where you're learning the concepts, understanding the concepts, the, gaining the knowledge, right? That is the Su phase. That's where you are learning. That is when you are doing CAPM, right? Doing CAPM is all about the Su phase. Then comes the Ha phase where you apply this knowledge, what you have learned, make it work for you, make mistakes, avoid it in the future, learn from it. So how is the phase where you become experienced, right? Without experience, only knowledge will not make you powerful. So, but first is the knowledge. With that knowledge, you apply that knowledge, you get the exposure to become experienced with that, gain experience by making mistakes, by figuring out what works, what does not work in which scenarios, the best case approaches. So you'll understand a lot when you are actually involved in those, right, in project management. So how is the phase where you become experienced, you learn, right, and become experienced. And then comes the re phase where you drive the soul, right? You become experienced now, so people look upon you. What you decide, what you say, people accept it. You might write books, you might create guides, you might create standards and people will follow you. So re is the phase where you are an excel, you are a master and people rely upon you. What you say, people take it seriously. You define the rules of the game. That is the re phase. But for that, it may not happen in a year or two years or five years, right? It might take 10 years with CAPM. Without CAPM, probably it will take 15 years. With CAPM, maybe 10 years, right? But so it just fast tracks your career. That's what CAPM can do. It's not a magic wand that overnight in one day, today you are not CAPM, tomorrow you are CAPM, and that's why you get something suddenly in one day. That's not going to happen. You need to think about in a long term that after you become CAPM, gradually what type of work you want to do, what type of roles you want to get into, and gradually you learn, gain experience, apply that, apply the knowledge that you learned, see the results, learn from it. People also started working with you, they see that you are capable, able to deliver because of the knowledge that you have. And that's where you create a credibility. That's the experience you are gaining, right? And gradually over a period of time, with that credibility and everything, you go into the real phase. So Su, Ha, Re are the three steps. Su is the initial learning phase. Ha is the phase where you gain experience. And Re is where you have excelled. Now people depend upon you. What you define, that becomes the rule. Suhari. Same applies everywhere. This is a very generic concept. You'll find it almost everywhere. So project management is no different. So now project management, when we talk about it, so all the principles and guidelines and standards, anything that you learn in the CAPM course, okay? So project, so that you are learning in project management. So that you can very effectively apply the knowledge base is really very powerful and you can apply in your professional life in projects operations and many other things in the corporate life in the business life if you are involved in the business and in your personal life as well so when i talk about project management all the concepts of project management are so well defined that when you try to align it you will realize that these project management are so the project management principle, the knowledge which you are going to learn is not specific to only projects. It's not specific to only corporate life. It's not specific to only business. It's like any aspect of your life you think of, whether it's personal, professional, business, any aspect of your life, it works. 
you can apply them obviously you might have to little bit tweak or customize them to make it work but that is true everywhere the case by case context to context you might have to customize even in within projects also it may not be applied in the same way you might have to tweak it but to tweak you need to understand the basics that's what we talk about in the capm course so project so and, and we have so you will find on youtube a video of mine which talks about life is a project life is a project and how we manage projects similarly you can manage your life also applying the same principles so that's also a one hour session which you can go through at your own pace on youtube just search with my name or the topic life is a project you will find it okay that talks about project management's application to personal life in very detail okay professional life we will be talking in detail anyways but people struggle to apply these concepts in their personal life at times and believe me if you are able to do that you will be really successful in your person on the personal front as well okay with your family lives with your uh, spouse kids and everybody you will be successful with your parents siblings extended family friends it works okay so if you want just go through that video of one hour and you will understand how project management principles can be applied effectively to your personal life as well so professional life business life and personal life that's the power of project management knowledge so i normally never say that project management is just to manage a project all these learnings which you learn are for your own self development you learn a lot for yourself that's where it becomes really powerful now what do you learn in project management when we say project management what it is what you do what do we actually cover when we talk about capm certification what is the syllabus of capm certification so if i need to tell you that this is what it is okay in that cell in one page if i need to show everything so when you say capm certification capm certification contains or any project management certification as such okay this is specifically for capm that's why i'm saying that but otherwise any project management certification as such is supposed to cover these these things one all the different aspects of a project the entire knowledge base of project management can be distributed in the 10 knowledge areas which you can see on the left side right that's the 10 knowledge areas knowledge areas because the entire knowledge base of project management lies in these 10 areas that's why we call it as knowledge areas knowledge areas of project management right then we have phases of project management the type of work that you do planning work execution work you can call it as phases or you can call it as the nature of the work that you do right so in project management world world it is called as the process groups so the type of work that you do the nature of work right that's the phases and then the last one is the approach that you take to project management there are three different approaches which you can see predictive adaptive and hybrid right so the three approaches by which you can get the work done in the project how you can manage a project right solutions probably might be the same you need to know in which scenario which approach works really well so the approach the phases or the uh, the nature of the work or the process groups that's what we call it and the knowledge areas so 10 knowledge areas where all the knowledge is distributed the five process groups which defines the nature of the work and the approaches to project management now one additional thing which is not here is the 49 different processes which you will be we will be covering in very detail in capm so these 49 processes probably covers anything possible that you can do in a project anything that you can think that you can do in a project falls under these 49 processes so you need to understand those 49 processes and figure out each of them which belong to which knowledge area belongs to which uh, the process groups or phases of the project so you need to link them okay so it's pretty easy linking if you understand those processes in detail linking them is like a auto automatic it should come to you okay so don't worry about linking what you need to know is the 10 knowledge areas the five phases or five process groups or the nature of work 49 processes and the three approaches to project management okay and uh, the five phases that i said in the previous slide they are actually the process groups process groups based on the nature of the work that you do if it's a planning work then you are putting it into the planning bucket 
executing work where you are actually implementing something doing something that's execution monitoring controlling ensuring correcting things monitoring as this monitoring and controlling so two words one is monitor other is control controlling means fixing the problem monitoring means making sure nothing is wrong right both together and closing so these are the five process groups every 40 process out of the 49 will fall into one of these five buckets and in totality you need to understand how to handle a project again in, when we talk about the certification course we talk much more in detail for those 49 processes what are the tools techniques what inputs outputs for each of the processes what you need to what you need to get to start the process what is expected out of the process so everything will be talked about in very detail okay so that's what we cover in detail for the 49 processes the 10 knowledge areas the five process groups or phases the three life cycles and 49 processes that is all about project management to be very frank technical project management the 20 percent science okay so once you understand this 20 percent science after that it's your on top of that we also talk about in our syllabus or a lot of additional things which is the art on how to implement this science effectively and make it work for you but eventually unless you don't make it work effectively for you results will not show up right i know people who just learn it put it in their pocket go back to work and do the same thing as before no point learning it then right so that was all about what is a project what is project management that you learn okay now the question is is it for you number one and if yes it is for you then how can you benefit from it so these are the two primary topics that we now we are coming into now that you understand what is a project what is project management the different aspects and everything let's talk about these two questions okay so first of all is it for you let's see whether it's for you or not so i'll tell you it is for whom now you need to evaluate it on yourself and see whether you fit in here or not okay so it is for you if you are willing to learn new skills project management will give you a lot of learning things you will the way of looking at things will change a lot after you go through this course so are you willing to learn new skills the number one number two are you interested in project management if you are interested in project management then you don't have a choice to grow in the career to you will have to learn about it anyways right so if you are interested in project management full stop you have to do it keen to learn new skills there are a lot of skills available in the market right this is one of them so you can decide whether this or something else then looking for a challenging role because see one of the things is the day you become capm you tell your manager i'm capm you might get a salary hike you might get a change in the role a better role but the expectations from your managers supervisors from your organization will also go up they're not giving you a higher salary a better role just do do nothing they expect a better output from you and with this knowledge base you are expected to deliver better output so be ready to take up challenging roles once you know more once you have a proven thing that you know more people will come to you they will come to you and expect more from you right so please be ready to take up challenging roles. if you want a relaxed life don't want to do anything in your life just paycheck to paycheck and just eight hours working nine hours working every day with not too much stress or nothing it's just a routine thing that you want to continue then probably don't go for CAPM because you will learn and then not use it right if you want to do something get some result create something which for which you feel an achievement then go for CAPM so see if you are okay with taking up challenging roles then are you willing to add value create something worthwhile do some savings do some things faster somehow add value there are a lot of different ways of adding value which we'll cover so are you willing to add value means put that walk that extra mile and stand out uh, stand aloof from the rest of the uh, team members other team project members right so are you willing to add value and then at times there are people who do capm because they're looking for higher education in management and these are this gives a brownie points if it's a point system capm will add additional points to it 
So you might get an advantage over others if you are CAPM certified. So if you are looking for a MBA or any of the master's degree or any of the degrees in management, higher education in management, CAPM is certainly going to help. And uh, if you are looking to relocate to other countries, this is one of the a lot of people actually come for CAPM because they want to move into the other countries where CAPM is highly recognized, right? So CAPM comes is offered by PMI, which is a US based organization, Project Management Institute, a nonprofit organization. So it's highly recognized in most of the uh, countries where it's US dominated, right? US, Canada, Australia, uh, Europe, Middle East, Europe, not that much, but Middle East, uh, India, Japan. So you'll find a lot of these places, Singapore. So you'll find a lot of these places where uh, CAPM has a very, very, very high recognition. Okay. So if you're willing to relocate to other countries and looking for opportunities there, CAPM might be helpful there. Rest is all your capability as well, right? It's not only the certification, but it's a mix of both the things. So though if an answer to any of those things is yes, if any one of them is yes, probably you can think of going for CAPM. Now, in case if you feel that any of those answers is yes, then how to benefit from it? Okay, so first of all, to benefit for it, you need to put in effort and get certified. So it's a Suhari thing, right? So learn from it. So you are in the Su phase where you need to learn and clear the exam. So the CAPM certification is, so when you say you want to benefit out of project management, one of the best approaches to benefit for, from project management knowledge is prove yourself. Prove yourself means certify yourself. Once you are certified, people, a lot of doubts about your uh, potential knowledge that you gay, have will be taken care. A lot of about your capability as well, right? Majorly is the knowledge that it proves a little bit in the exam, they test your capability in other things as well, which will also be proven there, but not completely. Knowledge is completely, yes. Knowledge is completely tested. Other capabilities tested to a little bit extent, not completely. So CAPM is one of the very good certifications to start with for a junior team member, right? That is one. And now, uh, how can you go for CAPM certification? So if you want to go for CAPM certification, the commitment needed from your side will be the last two bullet points. One, around 150 to 200 hours of effort that is required to crack the exam. That is one thing. And this is on the higher side, okay? So if you are capable enough, if you have a good grasping ability, it might be 100 to 150 hours, right? I have taken the worst case scenario. 150 to 200 hours of effort is what you need to invest in the entire preparation, in the entire process, application process, self-study, mock exams that you will take to evaluate yourself, improving your scores, fixing your gaps, identifying the gaps and fixing it. Everything inclusive is 200 hours, okay? 150 to 200 hours of effort. So it's not like that, oh, today you attended the sessions and the very next day you can crack the exam. No, right? So syllabus is huge. So CAPM is almost like doing a mini MBA. So MBA in project management and a CAPM course, syllabus. If you see the syllabus, 90% of the syllabus is the same. So you're almost doing a MBA in project management. So that's what you are completing and learning. So, so 100 to 200 hours of effort is the first thing. And the second thing is you should be investing, willing to invest 40,000 INR, 500 to 700 dollars, whichever country you are in, you can convert it into your location and check that. So this is the amount of investment. Now I'm saying investment, not expenses. Why? Because this is what you invest. And believe me, within a year or two, you get back what you have invested. You get back more than that. And after that, what you make throughout your career that we are not even considering. So the ROI is pretty high. Within two years, at times if you're capable, within one year, you might make more than what you are investing here. So return on investment ROI is pretty high for CAPM. Okay, so you should be willing to invest this much because learning something will not go anywhere. That certification, that knowledge which you are gaining, that will pay off with a higher salary, with a change of the job, change in the role, 
a lot of things that you might feel there are tangible, intangible benefits, which you might can't even imagine that you might get job satisfaction, like say, for example, right? A lot of people do see uh, the, these project management courses because they want to shift from technical to non-technical roles. Sometimes they don't want a promotion, but it's just that change in the job in the same position, job satisfaction. And they are like, that job satisfaction itself is more than enough for what I'm investing. No frustration, nothing, and I'm happy with my job. So you need to calculate all those things, factors, right? So hours of effort and the monetary commitment, effort commitment and monetary commitment. These are the two sorts of commitment. Whenever you are willing to take, whenever you feel that you are ready for that, you should go for CAPM. And given that in the previous slide, any of the answers is yes. Okay. And uh, what are the benefits from CAPM? As I said, growth in the career. So if you're already working one year, two years, three years of experience, then uh, in the long run, CAPM is going to help you for sure with the knowledge and with your certification proof credentials. So that is one salary increment, right? That you can expect. So if, let me give you some stats here about the salary increment. So if you say, for example, if you're changing a job without a CAPM, if you're expecting 10% uh, increment with CAPM, you should be expecting minimum 20% depending upon whether you are already overpaid, underpaid, a lot of factors come, right? Which geography, which industry you belong to. So based on all those factors, given without CAPM, what you are expecting with CAPM, double, not double, increase it by 10 to 20%. That is the higher salary expect. That 10 to 20% extra that you can expect, that is what is going to give you the ROI, one to two years, right? That's one. Now. Another thing is a lot of job profiles in the market, which says that certification is required, preferred, mandatory, or preferred. Even if it is preferred or whether it's optional or mandatory, whatever it is, whether they say preferred or whether they say required. Either way, if you have those certifications in project management, CAPM, say for example, in that case, you are automatically considered. So at least it has opened the door for you. You still have to crack the interview. But at least you will get an interview call for sure. Right? And many of the people will not even qualify for those jobs, even though if they are overqualified than you, they're capable, more capable than you. But because they are not CAPM, probably they are not preferred. That's the advantage you might get. And if they're saying CAPM required, salary is bound to be a little higher than normal. Right? And more credibility for sure, because if you tell me I'm PMP, I know what knowledge you are carrying, right? Without that knowledge, you just cannot crack the exam. So, you, so that gives you credibility. If you speak something, people listen to you seriously, take you seriously. Why? Because they know you have something which the others don't, maybe. Few pieces of information knowledge, you probably have extra against the others. So that's the credibility. And because of that credibility, people taking you seriously, people relying upon you, depending upon you, that's where you gain higher confidence. Believe me, the day I cleared the certification with PMI, the very next day, my body language was different. It could, you can view that. I can view that. I can feel that. You will feel confident, but please don't be overconfident. At least a little bit confidence on that, right? So, because it's just the knowledge, not your capability or performance yet to be proven, right? Only because you have the additional knowledge, you crack the exam. And people will start relying upon you, taking you seriously. So you will gain some sort of confidence, right? And why people are relying upon you? Because they know you know something which probably many of them don't know. And because of that additional knowledge, you become an expert. And with that expertise, knowledge, you are able to deliver better, better results, better outcome, right? Eventually, if you apply that knowledge, you will see the results coming out, which will lead to bigger confidence, more confidence in you and people rely more upon you. If you're showing results, people will depend upon you more, right? So better results outcome. Again, it's a cyclical thing. And job satisfaction, right? The type of work that you want to do, higher rules, a lot of those things gives a job satisfaction to many. So these are the benefits 
that you might get. But remember the first two slides is, I'm just going back to that. Is answer yes to any of these? If answer is no to all of them, please don't go for project management certification. It's a waste of your money and time and effort. So if answer is yes in any of these one, then think of how to benefit. First of all, to benefit from project management knowledge is to prove yourself, create the credibility by getting certified so that people know that you have the knowledge. They don't have to ask you, test you, right? To see if this type sort of commitment you can give. If you can give the commitment, then these are the benefits that you can gain. Make sense? So that was all from my side. These are the contact details in case if you are looking for CAPM certification, you can reach us out. Okay. You can message us on WhatsApp on the second number. So that's the WhatsApp number. You can message us and we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, send you the details. Okay. Once again, thanks everyone for patiently listening to me for 50 minutes. That I'll stop here. Thank you.